One of the benefits of using Arch Linux is being able to pick any desktop environment when installing the system. But it is always challenging to get rid of everything when switching to another one. I heard it is a no issue for Nix OS, so I decided to give it a try. And this is what happened. Given my previous experience on Gen 2, I don't want to fully commit this time from the very beginning. So I decided to ease myself in with Nix first. It is a tool which can be used as a package manager without Nix OS on top of a lot of Linux distributions. I was running OpenSUSE at the time, so it took me no time to start. Let's look at some of the unique features Nix brings to the table. First, isolation. All the packages installed using Nix are stored separately under their own path. They're installed in a self-contained manner, meaning each package along with its dependency will be put under a single path. The benefits are, first, different versions of software can coexist on the same system, even when they have different versions of dependencies. And second, when using in a non-Nix OS system, the Nix packages and their dependencies won't interfere with the packages installed by other package managers or the system dependencies. The next feature is the pre-built binary cache. Like Gen2 or AUR, Nix will build almost all the packages, at least the open source ones, from the source code. But unlike Gen2 or AUR, Nix has a binary repository. So when installing a package with an existing binary available, users won't have to wait for the compilation anymore, which saved a ton of time. Finally, Nix has a lot of packages and in newer versions too. One of the reasons I use Flatpak is the third-party preparatory software support it provides. Usually, I use it to set up Steam, VS Code, and Sublime Text. I also had to follow the official guide from Brave and Vivaldi to set up my browsers. Surprisingly, I found all of them available in Nix repository. Not only is the quantity huge, Nix also provides newer version. I was talking about the frustration that I couldn't use Sublime Text version 4 on Solus because the distribution only provides version 3 in their third-party store. So does the FlatHub. It is no issue anymore. I tried using Nix on Solus to install Sublime 4, which works perfectly. But like everything in the world, Nix has its own limitation when using as a pure package manager. The first one is that the applications installed by Nix won't show up in the desktop menu automatically. Because Nix doesn't copy the .desktop file over to the proper place. It is up to the users to do so if they want to have the icons available. The other thing is that I had to create a systemd service file after installing Telscale. But these are minor issues. They're solvable as soon as I got familiar with the location the bin files Nix is installing to. The biggest issue I was facing was that I cannot use Chinese input methods in any Nix software. I've tried both IBUS and FCITX installed on the system level and on Nix level. I've tried them in Plasma on OpenSUSE, GNOME on Fedora, Cinnamon and Mate on Linux Mint. None of the scenario worked. I guess it is because Nix packages don't have the power to interact with each other or the system level applications. Unable to type Chinese characters has annoyed me quite a bit. Because when I try something new, I want an immersive experience. So when I started using Nix, I switched all my browsers into Nix packages. I also uninstalled Joplin from Flatpak and started using Joplin Desktop from Nix repository. Now I can no longer take notes or search the internet using Chinese. This has pushed me over to installing the Nix OS fully. The other reason I want to try out Nix OS is using Pantheon. I always wanted to use it outside elementary OS, but it is not officially supported even by Arch until I see Nix OS has it in its official menu. There are three ISO files provided by the Nix OS website, GNOME, Plasma, and Minimal. Given my previous experience on Gen 2, 
In order to save myself some energy, I decided to start with a graphical one in a virtual machine. The installation procedure from the menu is easy to follow. I was able to install the OS with a KDE desktop without any issue. I also tried setting up the Pantheon desktop environment using the minimal ISO. The things I cannot try in a virtual machine are the internet and video. But I already figured out where to look before going forward. So now is the time to get real. When I was setting up the internet on bare metal, the Wi-Fi card won't connect when using the commands provided by the menu. After some digging, I realized I need to pass my actual Wi-Fi card interface name to the WPA CRI command. Installation went through properly after that. Then I installed NVIDIA preparatory driver, which breaks the Pantheon desktop immediately. But I was able to fix it in no time by changing the Nix configuration file following the Nix OS NVIDIA wiki offloading section. With the drivers working, I install Steam and configure it to be loaded by the dedicated graphic card. I install Proton Tricks from the Nix repository on the user's level, which picks up the games from Steam without a problem, and stack the Ubisoft Connect on top of it. And this is my gameplay. <sighs> I think I'm more of a Linux player than I am a casual gamer. I've shown Assassin's Creed for almost 6 months on my channel as a testing game for Linux, and it is still nowhere near the end game. Thank goodness I didn't choose to become a gaming channel. Unfortunately, now I have to talk about the challenges I'm facing on NixOS. I don't want to say that they are the limitation of the system, because I think they are due to how the system is designed and assembled. So it is just some difficulties that took me by surprise. First, in order to run the bash script, the shebang needs to be changed. It is suggested by the internet that you need to modify it to slash user slash bin slash env space bash, and the second is the binary files. According to their wiki, downloading and attempting to run a binary on NixOS will almost never work. This is due to the hard-coded path in the executable. There are several ways of running a binary in NixOS, but it requires some hacks. I'm not an expert yet, so I won't go into details on how they work. Instead, I'll put the link in the description below. For me, I found out about these two issues when I was trying to install the X Download Manager. The installation script just won't work even after changing the span. I ended up installing JDK 11 on the system to run it. But still, it can only sniff the videos without being able to download them due to the missing dependencies. Now I'm faced with a dilemma. On one hand, I love swapping desktop environment on NixOS. The experience is buttery smooth. It is at most two line change in the configuration file and no leftovers whatsoever. I went from Cinnamon to Gnome. Pantheon to KDE. It is as if the new desktop is installed with the system from the very beginning. Nix will remove all the dependencies coming with the previous desktop. But on the other hand, although I was able to play games using Nvidia on Steam easily, but not able to download the content from whichever websites I want, hmm, I'm not sure how long that will last me. And the other thing is that there are still possibilities that I need to spend more efforts for any native binary applications compiled for Linux. For example, I used to have several versions of JDK binaries in my user's path, so I can switch between the version by setting the Java home in bash rc file. Now I can't do that anymore. The only choice I have is to either configure the Java home on the system level so that the other programs like Maven can pick it up, or resort to Docker or Popman when doing the development work. So let's see how long NixOS will survive as my daily driver going forward. And that is everything for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.